One important stat to know is that the prevalence of anti-TPO antibodies in the general population is 3 to 6%. While the incidence of having these antibodies in those with chronic urticaria is much higher, we're talking between 17.7% .7 all the way up to 29%. Based on their findings from this study, the researchers recommend testing both TSH and anti-TPO antibodies and using thyroid medication when appropriate along with antihistamine. One of the most frustrating yet fascinating rash issues has to do with chronic hives, dermatographia, and urticaria, and your thyroid, specifically with autoimmune thyroid disease. In fact, I'd argue that based on the research I've seen, everyone struggling with chronic hives should investigate thyroid issues, which isn't always done or suggested. So I'm going to share with you more details on urticaria, how it's tied to the research to your thyroid, and share with you what testing you can ask your doctor for. So let's talk about what is chronic urticaria or chronic hives. It's an itchy skin condition where you develop raised reddish patches of skin due to swelling in the skin. There is some degree of angioedema involved with chronic urticaria, and it's typically involved as the result of mast cells and basophils that become activated. The resulting hives are also called wheels, and they are associated with conditions such as chronic spontaneous urticaria, chronic urticaria, and chronic idiopathic urticaria. Another type of chronic urticaria is called dermatographia, and it's a type of physical urticaria where your skin erupts in hives or wheels due to physical touch. And this can happen from scratching your skin or even from clothing that touches or presses into your skin. Dermatographia is also known as skin writing because some people can literally draw or write on their skin, which then erupts into a rashed, itchy pattern. Now, one participant of my skin rash rebuild group had such a severe case of dermatographia that she couldn't wear yoga pants or anything tight because she would welt up immediately thereafter, and it truly impacted her quality of life. And aside from dermatographia, there are other types of physical urticaria as well as non-physical types of urticaria, which include a variety of triggers that include exercise, delayed pressure, cold, and heat. So for example, exposure to hot water, the sun, vibration, or even spicy food. If you've wondered how chronic hives are treated, generally many people find the options to be really frustrating. The main problem is that in conventional medicine, it is often difficult to even define the exact type of urticaria you're dealing with. And by some estimates, 80 to 90% of chronic urticaria is the idiopathic form, where the external allergic cause or disease cannot be found. Allergy testing may be one option suggested by your doctor, and there are different types of testing available depending on the allergen and type of allergy, with patch testing for contact dermatitis being one option. That said, you might find yourself at a frustrating dead end if the testing comes back negative, which it absolutely can. And when it comes to treatment options for urticaria, antihistamines are often the go-to option, as well as avoidance to any known allergen. However, the use of antihistamines doesn't mean you'll be free from hives, and some will find that an antihistamine like Zyrtec doesn't work for you, leaving you with few options. Plus, taking antihistamines for the rest of your days isn't ideal for most people as they aren't without potential side effects. I've discussed the issues of using antihistamines long term in another episode with Dr. Chris Thompson. Now, if you're struggling with chronic urticaria, I've also discussed the hidden root causes that are often ignored in episode 261. Now, lastly, the newest option is a biologic drug known as Zolaire, which is an injectable medication used every four weeks to treat chronic spontaneous urticaria, not the other forms of urticaria. Some people find it helpful, while others do not.
One possible trigger of urticaria that's often overlooked is your thyroid, which is kind of surprising because there's actually quite a bit of evidence supporting this chronic hives autoimmune connection. So let's talk about it. The type of thyroid issue that is most closely linked to urticaria is a condition called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. While there are certain skin symptoms that are commonly associated with it, like dry eczema-like rashes, there is also this curious link to hives. To give you a bit of background in the event that you've never heard of this before, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the most common form of hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. It is an autoimmune disease where your body's immune system attacks your thyroid gland tissue, thyroid receptor sites on your cells, or enzymes responsible for making conversions between inactive and active thyroid hormones. This ultimately causes your body to end up with a low level of thyroid hormone. Now, Hashimoto's is more common in women, occurring four to 10 times more often in women than compared to men. And it typically develops in women between the ages of 30 to 50 years old. Lots of people spend years dealing with frustrating thyroid symptoms without getting a proper diagnosis. This happens due to one of two issues. First, you can have what's referred to as subclinical thyroid issues where your thyroid isn't functioning poorly enough so that the lab markers on your thyroid panel will show up indicating a problem. Secondly, it's often difficult to spot an imbalance in what's known as the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis feedback loop, or even to spot antibodies when your doctor is only running a single marker, specifically thyroid stimulating hormone, also known as TSH. A lot can be missed since this marker can't fully tell us what's going on and can look normal despite abnormalities that would be spotted if only the full thyroid panel with antibodies was run. Because one of the early signs of a thyroid imbalance is hives, it's crucial to advocate for yourself here if your doctor doesn't think to check your thyroid or only wants to look at TSH. If you're not aware of what a full thyroid panel entails, this list includes TSH, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, thyroglobulin antibodies, and thyroid peroxidase antibodies, also known as TPO. Now, you should be aware that with Hashimoto's, you can have elevated antibodies for years before you even develop thyroid symptoms. And if your doctor won't run the full panel or your insurance deductible is very high, there are ways to order the panel yourself at pre-negotiated flat rates. I'll put a link in the show notes to connect you with the one option we share with clients. Since Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a hypo or low thyroid state, the other end of the spectrum would be hyperthyroidism or overactive thyroid function. And people with hyperthyroid issues often suffer from anxiety, gastrointestinal issues, and difficulty with body temperature regulation. A common cause of hyperthyroidism is called Graves disease, which is another type of an autoimmune disease. While it's less common than hypothyroidism, it is possible to experience a rash from Graves' disease, which looks more like a reddish thickening of skin rather than something like hives. So if someone says this seems like a stretch to connect urticaria with thyroid issues, the American Academy of Dermatology Association actually lists hives as a sign of thyroid disease on their website. There is data showing the rate of thyroid dysfunction, including hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, and when there are antithyroid antibodies to be higher in those with chronic urticaria. And since chronic hives can be related to histamine intolerance, some researchers believe that thyroid antibodies could make mast cells, which release histamine, more susceptible to destabilization. I also think it's worth mentioning that there is also a significantly higher incidence of other autoimmune diseases among women diagnosed in conjunction with chronic urticaria. So it's not just a thyroid-specific issue. 
One theory supporting this idea is that infections can drive autoimmunity. The infection then goes on to trigger the state of autoimmunity and is defined as, quote, a focus of infection that can then start or show up somewhere else other than on the skin. One paper found that more than 35% of chronic urticaria patients had a focus of infection with potential infection triggers that included H. pylori, Yersinia, Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, Neurovirus, Blastocystis hominis, Giardia, Trichinella, Trichomonas vaginalis, and Toxocara canis. So if you've had any of these infections in the past, it could be a clue as to the potential autoimmune disease trigger in addition to possibly instigating chronic hives. If you're able to identify thyroid imbalance as part of your root cause combo driving hives, research indicates that thyroid medication may help you get things under control faster. In one study, 72 people with chronic urticaria and positive anti-TPO antibodies were randomly divided into two groups and given a daily low-dose antihistamine for three months. At the same time, one group also got levothyroxine, and it was this group that got the thyroid medication that had a faster recovery with a higher incidence of not being itchy. One important stat to know is that the prevalence of anti-TPO antibodies in the general population is 3 to 6%. While the incidence of having these antibodies in those with chronic urticaria is much higher, we're talking between 17.7% all the way up to 29%. Based on their findings from this study, the researchers recommend testing both TSH and anti-TPO antibodies and using thyroid medication when appropriate, along with antihistamines to minimize symptoms. So if you're interested in reviewing the medications and doses used in this paper, I'll link it up for you in the show notes. I also think in terms of symptom management to reduce histamine overload, a low histamine diet can be a useful short-term tool. But as a clinical nutritionist, I would caution you to avoid restrictive diets like this one long-term. It's not a solution, it's truly a band-aid while you look for those deeper issues. One final point here. I'm not making the case that thyroid dysfunction is the sole reason that you have urticaria. I think urticaria could be a sign pointing to some sort of thyroid problem. Obviously, having healthy thyroid function in general is crucial to avoid the various problems throughout your body that thyroid dysfunction can cause. But ultimately, there may be another reason driving the urticaria, so I don't want you to lose sight of the bigger picture here. Ultimately, your journey to addressing chronic hives has to be a balance of symptom management while you dig into your case, because in my experience, medication can be helpful tools, but unfortunately, they aren't a cure. I hope this connects some dots for you that link chronic hives and thyroid imbalances. So I'd love to hear your experience with chronic hives or dermatographia in the comments below this video. All of the additional resources I've mentioned in this episode, as well as the full transcript, is available over at skinterrupt.com forward slash 317. And then take a moment to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get notified first when daily content is available. And of course, share this with someone you know who needs to hear this. Thanks for joining me, and I look forward to diving deeper with you the next time. If you enjoyed this video, you need to tune in to this video next, then make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get notified as soon as a new episode drops. I'm excited to see you there and dive deeper with you on your skin healing journey.